who among us is without sin? This way, I cannot wait to see this debate. Like, two very interesting views. I cannot wait to see this go down. Same year, same year. Oh, don't worry. It's going to be... Uh... There's going to be a big, big expose, brother. Trust me, because these guys, including Khalil and Elias and all these guys have completely been uh, misrepresenting the entire situation. Actually blatantly lying, and I have the proof for it. No, I don't know about that. Don't worry, I've got proof. So uh, since you're here, Jake, I wanted to ask you the question like I asked everybody here. Uh, I'm not. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with Dr. Edward Fazer, and I wanted to ask you the question is that in his book, The Last Superstition, he argues much of contemporary issues in philosophy came from like the adoption of a mechanistic view of the universe, and that if you were, if you were to re-embrace the ideas of what was it, formal and final cause, these issues would, according to him, not be as severe as as they are now. I wanted to ask, is that true? Do you agree with that? And whether or not, you know, you would see going back to Aristotle's view of the universe as something that was, uh, as something that's plausible. I would have to, I would have to read uh, Phaser on that. So I don't want to comment without reading. This. Okay, nice. Because his book, The Last Superstition, is it's a really good book, and he it has some really interesting points to make. Yeah, I don't really like Phaser, to be honest. I don't respect. Uh, can you repeat that? It, it glitched out. He said he doesn't respect. I said I don't. I don't like Ed Phaser. I don't respect him. I think that he's uh, not a nice person. I don't know, man. I just, I just, I just, so quick question. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering what, uh, what exactly is the debate on? I, I see Tawheed, but, um, uh, I didn't know that, the there was two opposing views. Neo, Neo, a Neo Platonist view versus the, uh, uh, the defense of the authority creed. Oh, okay, okay. Two different models of Tawheed, basically. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll go ahead and follow that. Thanks. Yeah, one is Tawheed and one is like, uh, yeah, you can say. Is one of the views uh, like similar to where like how like everything is God or something like that? Or does that have anything to do with it? It's borderline. Uh, I'll tell you that's no, 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 he doesn't believe in what Now, I asked him a little bit ago, I asked, her doc, I asked Dr. Khalil, I said, hey, there's some people out there that would claim that this view that you hold is sure. Why, how, how would you argue against, you know, somebody making that claim? And, and he was saying that the universal intellect and the universal soul are contingent things. So they're dependent on God to exist. Uh, they exist eternally. How, how, my, my, I, I had yeah. to mute. That's, why, I said, that's why I'm saying. How does, that's why, yeah, I'm, let me answer you. Let, don't waste your time any further. Okay. This is why I'm saying it's a bla blatant lies, blatant, blatant misrepresentations, because I have direct quotations from Andani's own work and where he calls the universal intellect the wajib al wajud, the necessary existence. Well, let, let's just say he. Let, I mean, putting that aside, these things are can these other things. This in the universal intellect, and universal soul. Let's just say they're contingent, right? Is, can you can you ascribe partnership to to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with contingent things? Like, isn't that what the Prophet told people not to do, not to worship him, because you should not associate partners with Allah? I mean, obviously, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is a contingent being so why would it matter whether something's contingent or not to associate partners with the law um well he he has a different idea of what shirk is obviously so 
he's coming from a different, totally different angle. Uh, okay. his, his, but wouldn't it his, be that if you have idea, two gods, they'd be independent of each other? Um, his idea of shirk is basically when you have the, the Neoplatonic scheme, uh, shirk is essentially um, attributing something that's higher than something else that you, you shouldn't be attributing it with or giving something, uh, attributing something to something lower than uh, what's supposed to be due to the higher thing. So for example, if I'm going to attribute something to um, the universal intellect that should only be attributed to God, this is shirk or vice versa. So this is his ba basically his understanding. So his way of getting out of it is by uh, saying that none of the names and attributes in the Quran actually refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They refer to the universal intellect and universal soul. And so there's not shirk as far as he's concerned because you're not, there's nothing that you're really attributing to God or that you're attributing to these other beings that should be attributed to God. He doesn't think that they're attributed to God. So that's his explanation. So, Jake, if you get the chance, uh, check uh, your messenger. On which plat? On which plat? Prep, prep group. Why go some? go some? Okay. Yeah. So I'm not sure about the names of uh, the names of Allah, but if something is dependent on something else, doesn't that negate it being partners with it automatically? Wouldn't it have to be independent of that thing to be? I don't Sorry, know, who um, was your question for? Anyone, anyone. What was the question again? Can you repeat it? Of course, if something is like shirk, wouldn't it have to be independent of God? So if something is dependent on God, it's it can't be shirk. No, I don't hold to that opinion. Yeah, because what if what if what if we uh, stuck for Allah, but what if we started worshipping the Prophet ﷺ? No, no, of course, that's shirk, uh, 100%. But the Prophet is a contingent thing that's dependent on God. Mm -hmm. So I still think it would, could still be shirk, even even though we would be attributing partnership to God uh, via a contingent object. I'm so excited for this debate. You guys don't understand. Like, I'm even more excited for this debate than I was when, when uh, you know, when I found out that uh, William Lane Craig debated uh, Christopher Hitchens. <laughs> I'm even more excited about. <laughs> you got to be shitting this. Yeah, like I would make this up. Hey, the world is a rich tapestry, my friends. But trust me on this, you don't want to see it. <laughs>